Hey guys, what's going on? Infinite here on 5 Minutes or Less. Now we're going to be looking at mixing the pre-mixed instrumental, right? kind of sounds like an oxymoron, but this instrumental was mixed without a vocal on it, and so sometimes we'll have to make adjustments. Not always. The producers are getting really good now about carving out about where the vocal would sit, and it's just really a layup for the rapper now where you can just quick mix your vocals and send your beat out. This, this song would have sounded great if I hadn't mixed the vocal, or the beat, sorry. Um, but I decided to anyways, just for this tutorial. So, the first thing I did on the beat was I threw on an EQ and notice it's stereo because the beat is stereo and we want to match that. Because if I were to put mono, all of a sudden the sense of space in the beat, the wideness, the stereo signal, it'd be gone, it'd all be mono, and we're going to feel like our beat lost a lot of light. So again, if your signal's stereo, do a stereo plug-in. If it's mono, like the vocal, do a mono plug-in. I will note that the reverb and delay I do is always stereo. That way, like the panning I have on the ad libs is going to stay panned and whatnot. Okay, so to the beat. So the first thing I did was actually I cleaned up a little bit of the kick, which might surprise you in the hip hop genre, right? Why would you remove the kick? But it's it was just a little too boomy for the vocal, and I'll show you what I mean. I felt like it was kind of covering up or distracting from the vocal. So I'll boost this place that I cut and show you what it sounds like really exaggerated. Warning, you might want to turn your volume down a little bit. I'm not sure how loud that's going to be, but it's pretty loud. Come on, let the flow like yo dog chill. This the reason I'm alive and I'm feeling straight privileged. So yeah, it hits really hard. It sounds great, but you don't need to hit that hard because in the next thing I show you when we're mastering the song, that's when you can get the level a lot bigger. And just increasing the level is going to make that kick hit really hard. So anyways, I, I cut out, very small cut, just two, de two and a half decibels, um, just got it a little tighter. And then up here, I'll show you really quick, it was just kind of boomy or muffly. Which you're gonna find out about 200 to 400, it will probably have some muffle from time to time. That's a great place to go check if you're hearing it. Or if it's just not sounding clear, go check right there between two and 400, maybe even 500, and you'll probably find something you can pull down. Again, about two and a half decibels. And then I got this plugin, which is free, from a company called Flux. It's called Bittersweet V3. They also have a paid version of Bittersweet, so if you're going to go get it, make sure you get the free one. Otherwise, you might be like $150 less than you had originally. Uh, this works great. Basically, it's a transient shaper, and you might be like, what the heck is that? Long story short, a transient is the initial volume or loudness of a sound. So like the crack of a snare that... That's the transient, and then the tr is like the sustain of the sound. So what this is going to do is it's going to shape the transient to either poke out more or sound more um, bitter, as they call it, or we're going to round out that transient and make it sweeter or less noticeable. So I got it right around 7.5%. I just thought that sounded nice. Um, I'll show you all the way cranked and all the way removed so you can see what it's doing. Come on, let the flow. Yep, okay. Come on, let the flow like yo, dog, chill. This the reason I'm alive. So again, you can hear how it's shaping that transient. So I just shaped it a little bit more. The reason I did that is so now instead of the vocal sitting like on top of the beat, now the beat is a little bit spikier, you could say. And so now the vocal has room to sit inside the beat instead of just on top of the beat. And now real quick, I'm also going to show with this. It's called sidechain compression. But in our case, we're actually doing what's called frequency ducking. All you need to know is that um, if you have a multiband compressor like the C6 from Waves, I'd recommend having it. It's just a great tool. Uh, they throw their stuff on sale all the time. So just stick around on their website. Maybe subscribe. They'll send you emails on all their sales. Wait till it's like 30 bucks and go pick it up. It's dope. Uh, but anyways, yeah, so do the C6 sidechain, again, stereo, because I have stereo vocals on, cause I, because I panned them. They're originally mono, like we talked about. So anyways, um, you click on this little settings knob, you go to the plug with the settings wheel, and go to processing, and then stereo aux input. Um, in my case, it's the second input, because I routed the beat first, so if it was here, it'd be the beat, and second is the vocal. Oh, and another important step to know is that the vocals, you can see right here, 
I've right clicked and side chained them, meaning that they're going to go into this channel unheard, but they'll be able to affect the channel if we so choose, which we do. So this video is going to be a little bit over five minutes because of this part, but I believe it's important and it's worth the extra time. So again, I felt like the vocal and the beat and everything were sounding good, but I wanted the vocal a little bit cleaner, a little bit more prominent. And so let me pull this in front. And so what I did is I set it up saying, hey, again, we have threshold, right? And again, over here, you can see all the settings. So threshold is the little thingies right there that say thresh. Gain is the volume boost. Range is how much we're going to let the volume either be increased or decreased. In our case, we're ducking or decreasing. Attack is how fast we want that to happen. Think about the attack of the compressor. And again, release. How long do we want it to hold, like the release of the compressor? If you go load and you do PA default, or you just copy my settings, these are pretty, pretty standard uh, for what we're trying to do, and it sounds clean. So anyways, so yeah. So the first thing we do is we figure out, hey, I want to bring my vocal more prominent, which is vocal intelligibility, or where you can really hear the words being pronounced and understand what the rapper is saying, is usually between 2 and 4K, usually. And so I'm going to carve a little bit of the beat out every time the vocal comes in, and you'll see that happen. So watch this right here. We're going to actually, because we clicked external, that's important, you want to click external if you want your vocal or your side chain signal to affect this. If this is over the top, definitely send me a message and I can do a more in-depth uh, video on this part exactly. But basically, the vocal is going to come louder than this. It's going to pull the beat down, which is going to then make the vocal more clear. So for the sake of time, I did that in multiple places. And I actually also did it oops, right here to make a little bit more room for the vocal again with some of the thickness of the vocal so here is before Coming with the flow like yo dog chill this the reason I'm alive and I'm feeling straight pretty the after like for the love from above when I'm real this so please join the movement cuz I could really feel this again before Coming with the flow like yo dog chill this the reason I'm alive and I'm feeling straight privilege like for the love from above when I'm real this and the after the flow like yo dog chill this the reason i'm alive and i'm feeling straight privilege like for the love from above when i'm real this so please join the movement because i could really feel this again it just cleans it up a little bit and the beat and the vocals aren't fighting for space as much all right guys that's it for mixing the beat i hope all that was thorough and you learned a lot have a great day